Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Cummings. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship, and I congratulate my honourable friend from the Isle of Wight for securing such an important debate. In the short amount of time available, I wanted to talk about two issues. Firstly, is the Green Belt, and secondly, the standard method for cal calculating housing need. And I wanted to speak in support of the government position in many ways, and I think the government are being unfairly uh, blamed by many local authorities throughout the country who are using uh, the blame game to get away from their individual responsibility to set housing need within their own individual areas. My constituency in Berry, Berry North is very different to other, other, other honourable members' constituencies. We have different needs, different priorities. We are not an area where there's a, a, a great deal of second homes. And therefore, the best place and the best people to decide that is a localised planning system that responds to localised needs. And our local politicians have to step up to the mark to decide the housing that is required in an area, where that should be built, and the type of housing that we need. That's why we elect local politicians. In the uh, planning white paper, there are three categories of land type identified, growth areas, renewal areas, and protected areas. Green belt is part of the protected area. Uh, within the planning for the future, it states quite clearly that the standard method will determine housing requirements, but the green belt will be a constraint upon that. In discussing the standard method, the white paper goes on to say the standard method would make it the responsibility of individual authorities to allocate land suitable for housing, uh, sorry, sorry, for housing to meet the requirement. However, the existing policy that we have today on green belt will remain in place. And that is taken even further in the government's response to the consultation on local housing need proposals, which was updated on the 1st of April this year. It's made clear in there that meeting housing need is never a reason to cause unacceptable harm to the green belt. And I think all speakers would agree with that. It's further made clear that the standard method, i.e. the use of 2014 figures, does not present a target in plan making, but instead provides a starting point for determining the level of need uh, for the area, and it is only after consideration of this, alongside constraints such as the green belt and the land actually made available for development, that the decision on how many homes should be planned is made. So the position is absolutely crystal clear. It is for local authorities to de determine precisely how many homes to plan for, where those homes are, and most appropriately located, taking into account their local circumstances and constraints. Too often we see local authorities, I said at the start of my speech, avoiding responsibility. In Bury, we've not had a local plan since 1997. Not one elected um, ruling body of Bury Council has been able to come up with a thoughtful, ambitious plan for jobs, for growth, for infrastructure, for the housing that we need, because we need affordable housing. And that is an indictment of local democracy rather than an indictment of the government who are handing the decision for the building of Greenbelt, how a local area wishes to view itself, to those local councillors, to those local officers who are actually employed to do that. The standard method from 2014, there is an argument that those figures are out of date and they, I would prefer the 2018 ONS figures to be used. But we cannot come back or we cannot ignore the fact that the government are giving each local authority in this country the legal tools to protect the green belt, to ensure that the housing uh, that is required for our areas meets local need. If local authorities are incapable of meeting that responsibility, that is not the government's fault.